All right, so in the last video, we talked a lot about uh, kind of what is an infection, what's a disease, um, some ways of describing things. We're going to continue on with that, particularly about diseases and some stages of diseases. But before we do that, let's do a review question here. We have a graph here that's showing virulence, right? So based on the information in the graph below, which organism is more virulent? So we have agent one, that's one organism, or agent two, that's the other one. So our possible answers are A, agent one, B, agent two, C, both are equally virulent, uh, D, this answer cannot be determined from this graph. So go ahead and pause the video and think about that one. All right, our answer is A, agent one, because it took fewer organisms to kill half of our test population than agent two, which took about 600. So uh, the less organisms it takes to kill half the test population, the more virulent we call that disease. So remember virulence is like how severe um, the agent, how severe the disease is. Okay, so we're gonna talk about diseases and some of their main concepts. We have some important terms here when we're talking about uh, Signs and symptoms. These are things that come with diseases and they help us identify them, but there's a clear difference between the two. Uh, we'll talk about immunopathogenesis in infectious diseases. So if we break that down, uh, immuno, that's the immune system. Pathogenesis is kind of um, how we deal with pathogens, how, how the immune system deals with pathogens. And that actually is going to, in some ways, cause some harm to our body. So our immune system actually causes a little harm to us. And then we'll talk about the five basic stages of an infectious disease. There are some clear stages in here. Okay, uh, not to go crazy here, but this table of terms is just very useful, uh, not only just for this course, I, I don't necessarily expect you to have all of these memorized, but uh, they are very critical in describing diseases. So uh, we talked about acute versus chronic infections, um, something like a latent infection where it goes dormant. Um, how about bacteremia, the presence of bacteria in blood? septicemia, the presence and replication of bacteria in blood, viremia, the presence of virus in blood, toxemia, a toxin in the blood, right? So you can see emia means blood, and then we have different terms that describe what is in the blood. That's really critical to know. Um, when you have a patient who is suffering from septicemia, they're about to die from a blood infection, so they need intravenous uh, antibiotics right away. Primary infections, secondary infections, uh, nosocomial infections or hospital-acquired infections, uh, big problem. MRSA is one of those, methicillin-resistant staph aureus, highly contagious, easily transferred uh, through inadvertent contact. That could be uh, a care worker that touches someone and then doesn't uh, wash their hands or gets it on their clothes, wipes their clothes, and then transfers it to another patient. We'll see a case study later in the course where uh, this actually ends up killing someone. How do we define a disease? Well, a disease is a disruption of the normal structure or function of any body part, organ, or system that can be recognized by a characteristic set of signs and symptoms. I'll define what these are in a moment. An infectious disease is a disease caused by pathogens. So that's like a bacteria, virus, uh, fungus, parasite, things like that. And it can be transferred from one host to another. So a disease, right, that's the broad term. That could be cancer, that could be diabetes, um, that could be heart disease, right? But an infectious disease, that's a specific one, like our SARS-CoV-2, our COVID-19 disease caused by the virus SARS-CoV-2, or AIDS, which is a disease that's caused by HIV, the virus. So infectious disease has something that causes it. What's the difference between a sign, a symptom, and what are sequelae? So diseases are identified and diagnosed by certain signs and symptoms. 
a sign is anything that can be observed by an external examiner, an outside examiner. So a doctor looks at a patient and sees that they have a fever, right? Their temperature is high or they have a fluid filled rash or um, they have pus coming out, right? Uh, those are all signs, things that an external observer can see. A symptom is something that is experienced by the patient. So uh, that's subjective, right? So signs are objective. Anyone can see them. Symptoms are subjective. Only the patient can tell us those. Pain. What's your pain scale, right? On a, on a scale of 1 to 10, right? How much pain are you in? Uh, fatigue. These are things that I guess maybe we can observe, but we can't quantify it, whereas a patient can tell us precisely how much pain they think they're in. Um, so signs and symptoms uh, often get lumped together. Oftentimes we just call everything symptoms, but technically there are different words for them. When we see something that happens frequently, we call it a syndrome. It's a collection of signs and symptoms that all occur together uh, in, in, a, in a specific condition. So an example of a syndrome would be something like irritable bowel syndrome, right? Um, this is gastrointestinal issues. They are very similar signs and symptoms, very unpleasant ones. Um, that come from things. And uh, there can be multiple causes of IBS, but... We call this a syndrome because it's all kind of collectively the same. And these signs and symptoms are really critical in identifying what the disease is um, and what might be causing it. So I talked about our immune system, right? Our immune system is designed to attack and destroy things. And in the process of doing this, when a host is infected, its immune system can sometimes attack and damage its own cells. We'll learn all about this in the immune system chapter, but um, that's part of like when we have uh, when people have COVID, right? Uh, there is a lot of um, respiratory distress. Some of that is the immune system killing infected cells. So your body kills cells that are infected with viruses and uh, things like hepatitis that can lead to severe liver issues. So this is what we call immunopathology. Um, which is the response to an infection. And that could be leading to some of the signs and symptoms that we might see, like coughing or, or sputum, things like that. After a disease resolves, there still can be consequences that are left behind. We call those sequelae. Uh, in the case of strep throat, it can actually cause uh, heart damage that can last for weeks after the infection is uh, resolved. So uh, just because the uh, agent, the, the organism that causes the infection is gone, doesn't mean the effects aren't still there. So that would be sequelae. Okay, so now we're going to characterize the stages of an acute infectious disease. So remember, acute is a quicker one. This would be like the common cold, right? We have a couple of different stages, and we're going to look at uh, the number of microbes in orange, and these are just arbitrary units. This isn't a real example, but uh, then the immune response. So this is the host's immune response, how much activity is going on. We have a couple of different phases, incubation, prodromal, illness, decline, convalescence, and then the long-term outlook. Okay, so let's look at each of these in detail. Okay, the incubation phase, this is right after the microbe gets in, and it goes right up until the first signs of disease. So the patient might be contagious at this point. Um, if the infectious dose that the patient got is low, so if they only got a small amount of bacteria or virus or whatever, the immune system might be able to deal with it. We might never go beyond this, right? The immune system kicks on and deals with this tiny amount of uh, infectious agent microbe. But if it does continue, if the microbe starts to grow and replicate, it might transition to the prodromal phase. That's where we first see our, our first vague symptoms, and this is a very short stage. Okay, so the, the microbe is replicating, but the immune system hasn't caught up. 
So quickly we move to the illness phase, which is where symptoms and signs are clearly apparent. Uh, the pathogen is going to end up reaching its peak number. Um, and this is kind of the make or break point, right? The immune system is trying to catch up, but the pathogen is replicating highly. Basically, either you're going to have your immune system catch up and it's gonna start killing the pathogen, or the pathogen is going to overtake you and potentially kill you in some cases. Some common responses to this could be like fever, Fever is actually your body's response to an infection. It raises your temperature to try to kill or inhibit the growth of whatever is uh, causing this disease. So it tries to stop the microbe from growing by cranking up your thermostat. So some fever is actually good. Um, when it gets too high, it starts to like cook our brain proteins. That's bad. Okay, so if the immune system is able to ramp up and start uh, bringing down the number of those microbes, that's when we tip over into the decline phase. Really, the immune system has won at this point, and the uh, amount of microbes starts to go down. Uh, fevers might break, we'd have sweating, uh, vasodilation, that's opening of blood vessels, flush, red, um, trying to cool the body off at this point. Um, and so then the number of microbes will keep going down and we get to the convalescence stage, which is uh, once symptoms have, and signs have uh, completely disappeared. Now you notice there might still be some microbe there. Uh, in a lot of cases, your immune system can't get everything, but it's now finely tuned and highly ramped up and it's very specific to whatever was causing that. So this microbe, it's always on the lookout. It's keeping that number down long term. Uh, but over time, our immune system, our immunity does uh, go down. So we'll learn all about antibodies and things like this uh, much later in the course. But uh, we do retain that immune system memory. And this is actually how vaccinations work. They basically in, uh, inject something that looks like the microbe and it cranks up the immune system before any of these microbes get in. So when they, uh, the microbes do come, the immune system's at this stage already and it's ready to knock it down quickly, never go beyond the incubation phase, hopefully. Okay few more terms. Uh, we kind of used some of these before, but uh, public health agencies need terms to track disease rates and severity. So they have standard uh, terms here, like morbidity, the rate of illness due to uh, disease. So uh, how much diabetes is there in this community or how much COVID is there in this specific county? Um, that would be a morbidity measure. Incidence uh, is the number of new cases that develop in a year. Uh, and then mortality is the death rate due to a disease. Um, we'll come back to these uh, in later chapters when we talk about epidemiology, but uh, usually these are measured per a certain population size, right? So how many cases of diabetes per 100,000 people? That can help us normalize between a large city and a, a rural community, right? Um, if we say there's one case in a rural county and one case in the city, that might not be the same rate because there may be a million people in the city and only 50 people in the rural town, right? So uh, that rate is much different then. And the CDC actually uh, publishes all of this in, in a weekly report called Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. Um, very descriptive name, right? Uh, that talks about current outbreaks, statistics, other public health things that are going on in the United States. Um, and a lot of uh, practitioners will subscribe to this. Um, you can probably get it free online and uh, learn about what outbreaks are out there. Okay, so we had a lot of terms talking about diseases. Uh, we use signs and symptoms to recognize and diagnose diseases. These signs and symptoms are caused both by uh, products from the microbes, so some microbes make toxic things that hurt us, but also by our own host immune response. That's our immunopathology part, right? Uh, we attack ourselves sometimes to try and fight off these microbes. 
We have the stages of an infectious disease, incubation period, prodromal phase, illness phase, decline phase, and then convalescence. Uh, and then we have morbidity, that's the measure of how many people are sick from an infectious disease, and mortality is the measure of how many die from an infectious disease. Okay, that's it for 2.2.